today's class. Today we will be talking about the concept of Friedman's and Friedman gave the model which is known as the core periphery model. So let's first of all understand what was the basis on which Friedman gave the core periphery model. So his basic element in the model was for any region we need to study development from two perspectives. It's within the region and outside the region. Okay. So for any region to develop, what is important is what is the development that is going within the region and what is the development that is outside the region. So he laid down the concept of core and periphery. Now as the term suggests, core is the main center okay, and then you have the periphery. So according to him, core was a region that was rich in capital. Okay, this core had a huge lot of capital but was scarce in labor. Okay, so what is happening in the core is there is a lot of capital, lot of money to invest, lot of projects that can come up but there is scarcity of labor. So what Friedman gave was there needs to develop, there is a need to develop a periphery or this periphery has a huge lot of raw material and huge lot of labor. Now what is happening here is this periphery which has a lot of raw material and lot of labor would definitely supply the labor to the core and this core would start to develop. Now Friedman in this model explained that there are, so you have a core, you have a periphery, then above the core there is a region which is known as the upward transition. Upward transition region. Okay. This region is a region that is influenced by the uh, core and has a lot of economic activities and you have a resource friend here. Okay. So you have another, you can call it periphery. So this periphery and this periphery. So according to him, these two periphery, this periphery was mainly for labor supply and this periphery was mainly aimed at raw material. Okay. So what he basically said was, for the core to survive, there is, it is very important that there is adequate supply of labor and raw material. So in this, he explained a kind of balance between the core and periphery. So he said that if there is a core, okay, and this is the periphery, core has the capital which it can supply to periphery. On the other hand, periphery has the labor and raw material that it can supply to the core. Okay. Now why does you have a relation between core and periphery? So what happens is in core there is shortage of labor. Okay. So what is happening from periphery is migration of labor. So labor starts to move from periphery to core and on the other hand why the labor moves? The major reason is labor gets adequate amount of wages or I should say income. So because labor is getting adequate wage and income, the labor prefers to move to the core region. Slowly and gradually what happens is this periphery would supply most of its labor to the uh, core region. As a result, there would be scarcity of labor in the periphery. Okay. So this is the basic fundamental model that he gave and he expressed that there should be some kind of balance between the core and the periphery that should happen. 
So he in his model gave four stages of development. Now let's understand those four stages. Okay. So we'll understand this with help of simple um, circles here. Okay. So initially, what treatment did was he said that there are independent centers that are in existence. Okay. There is a no major big urban center. So if I say there are ten centers, let's assume all of these centers are of the same size. Now what is happening in the first stage of development here? Okay. You have independent centers. All these centers would be of equal size. Okay. There is no flow of um, uh, labor or capital from one region to another. So this is a classic example of the pre-industrial society. Mainly agricultural based. Okay. There is no big urban center. Now slowly and gradually what would happen as we discussed in the diagram before this. What was happening was a region starts to develop. So supposedly this region starts to develop. Okay. What would happen is this region will pull labor from the periphery. Okay. As this region is supplying labor to this region, here there would be scarcity of labor ultimately and this region would start to shrink down. Okay. So what would happen in the stage 2 would be something like that. You would have a region that will grow and the nearby regions would that would be supplying stuff raw material and labor to the core region okay so what is happening here is supposedly slowly and gradually this was the original region okay this enlarged and became the core here and i have the small centers here so what is happening is there is movement of labor that is going here there is movement of raw material to the core and the core gets to start, uh, starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger and increase in size and the periphery tries to decrease or remain constant. Now, as and when the core is getting bigger, what is happening is something similar to a uh, tidal effect. So, if you go to the ocean, the ocean coast, what would happen? Uh, the beach area, what would happen if there is a tide? Okay. There would be sudden gush of waves onto the beach, okay? And slowly and gradually what would happen is, this would start to retard. As, in the, as the high tide settles down, the water moves back into the ocean. So this region is what is the region of backwash effect. And similarly what is happening is in the region too. Uh, so once this region has grown up to its maximum potential, slowly and gradually there would be diseconomies of scale, okay, and that would result to result in trickling down or a trickle down effect to the nearby areas. Okay, so this is stage two is a technical example or a classic example of the stage of a start of industrialization. Okay. So under stage 2, what is happening is, there is in uh, start of industrialization and there is increased disparity. Okay. So the disparity between the core and the periphery starts to increase. Now what would happen in the stage 3, as we discussed here, okay. There is the core, okay. Now since there is this economies of scale that are coming up, this core would slowly and gradually start to trickle down, okay, or there would be kind of a, a wash down effect or a backwash effect, and that would lead to development of other subcenters, okay. So, this stage would be a classic example of development of sub regions 
or sub centers okay so what is happening here is let me demonstrate it once again so you have the core and these were the original centers and there was transfer of labor and raw material to the core now you have a core here okay you have these regional centers in the middle okay what are ha what is happening is you have these regional centers here what is happening is they are supplying it to the core but since the core is unable to hold such a huge uh, mass that is coming up okay it will slowly and start um, slowly and gradually start to dissipate down and there would be services that would be coming up in the periphery so you will have a core here which is bigger and there would be kind of sub regions or sub centers that would start to grow in the nearby areas which would be aiding the core they would be supplementing this core they won't grow as independent centers but they would be supplementing the core activities and finally the last stage here so this core would be supplying here okay so this would be the kind of basic model that would run in the stage 3 and finally there would be a model where you will have the core you will have the sub regions that are developed and this periphery due to the influence of sub region this periphery uh, the small centers that were there would start to grow okay so these regions would also start to grow in size and there would be a kind of interaction between each of the elements so there would be interaction between this this so there would be a kind of sequential development or growth of the complete region so this is what friedman basically propounded in his core periphery model so let me once demonstrate it again so in the first example you have just the urban centers that are coming up okay slowly and gradually what is happening the center starts to grow so this center starts to grow and there are small centers that exist nearby which are supplying constant raw material and labor to the core now since the core has grown up so much that there are dis economies of the scale that are running up and it cannot handle that much of the uh, pressure it slowly tries to circulate down and percolate to the nearby areas and this is what is known as the trickle down effect which happens in the stage 3 we also call it the backwash effect or the trickle down effect as a result of it there are sub centers that start to grow in the nearby region so under stage 3 you have a sub center of sub regions that are growing and finally you have a chain of development where you have a sequence of activities that are running parallel in the economy so this 